Mochizuki Tuya is an average person in the real world who made the mistake of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was killed in a lightning strike and appeared before the Maker in Heaven. The Maker apologizes to Tuya for taking his life by accident. Tuya, who seems pretty chill over the fact that he just died, accepts his fate and forgives the Maker for the accident. Impressed by his calm attitude, the Maker decides to make it up to him by reincarnating him in another world. He tells Tuya about his plans to send him to a world where he can use magic. He then asks Tuya if there's any special thing he'd like to have in the new world. Surprisingly, Tuya tells the Maker he'd like to be able to use his smartphone in this new world he's going to. The Maker grants his wishes and also the ability to use all forms of magic to his advantage, including charging his phone. Once the deal is finalized, the Maker does his magic and sends Tuya to the new world of magic. Tuya wakes up in the woods completely confused about his surroundings. Poor guy was yeeted out of heaven. Anyways, he receives a call from the Maker who tells him about the map function on his smartphone. At least he won't get lost in the new world. Tuya thanks the Maker and keeps moving forward. On his way to the nearest town, a merchant passes by and stops his cart after seeing the weird clothes Tuya had on him. He offers Tuya a ride to town for free, buys all the rare clothing he has on, and gives him some other normal clothes plus some gold coins. Tuya accepts all the gifts in good faith and exits the merchant's shop. Before leaving, he asks the merchant if there were any inns around. The merchant tells him about the Silver Moon Inn, somewhere around town. Tuya leaves the shop and heads for the inn. On his way there, he overhears two ladies getting mugged in an alleyway near him. Apparently, the two ladies were in a deal gone bad. Tuya approaches the muggers, buys the ladies' items with a gold coin, and beats the hell out of the two dudes. Apparently, the Maker had granted Tuya's body superhuman reflexes as well. After the fight, he explains to the ladies who introduce themselves as Elze and Linza that he was searching for an inn. The ladies tell him they're headed there, so Tuya tags along. On getting there, Tuya checks into the inn for a month and settles with the ladies for a quick brunch. There, they talk about getting work somewhere in town solving quests for the people. Tuya agrees to their idea, and the next day, they all get to the guild to take on some quests to earn coins. On getting there, Tuya finds out he can't read the characters in this world, so he asks them to read it for him. The girls check out all the quests on the board and choose the one with the medium difficulty. They register themselves as knights, get their weapons, and head straight to the forest to capture five one-horned wolves, as mentioned on the poster. Things go well for the trio as they manage to capture six one-horned wolves. They detach the wolves' horns and bring them back to the guild for payment. The attendant verifies their kills and pays them their coins. On getting back to the inn, Tuya asks Elza and Linza to teach him how to read and write their language. Elza assigns that responsibility to Linza and continues their discussion. Tuya also asks the ladies to teach him how to use magic. Firstly, they have to confirm if he can use magic. Linza brings out six different spell stones with each stone representing the elements of magic. Naturally, no one should be able to use more than three elements in their lifetime. However, Tuya finds out he can use all six elements of magic. Elza and Linza are shocked to the bone after seeing Tuya use null magic which is the rarest magic spell known in their world, to open a wormhole portal to the forest they were in not too long ago. After trying out their spells, the ladies compliment Tuya for being so gifted. Tuya gets nervous and chuckles. Just then, the innkeeper interrupts the trio and introduces them to Air, the girl who works across town. Air has been searching for a delicious meal to add to her shop's menu. Tuya suddenly remembers ice cream in his former world. He takes out his phone or magic device and looks up the recipe to make ice cream online. He teaches Air and the girls the recipe and tries it. After making it, the ladies take the ice cream and find out how delicious it is. Tuya had just saved Air's shop. On their way to their next quest, Tuya takes a picture of Elza on their wagon and saves it. After riding a few meters forward, they decide to stop and take a break. Apparently, they were on a mission to deliver a letter to the royal palace and needed a place to chill out for the day before continuing their journey. As they think of places to get to, they hear some hubbub somewhere around and decide to go check it out. On getting there, they get to see a lady samurai take down a bunch of men with so much strength. Unfortunately, she stops when she gets very hungry and is exposed to attacks from the guys. Tuya quickly steps in to save her from the men. They bring down all the men and escape to an alleyway around town. There, the lady introduces herself as Kokono Yai, a lady samurai from Eshin. Tuya introduces himself and asks her what got her in such trouble. Ye tells them she kinda lost her travel funds on her way to the capital and has been starving for days on end. Tuya and the ladies have mercy on poor Ye and treat her to a hearty lunch. Ye munches on the food with an incredible appetite. While she eats like an animal, Elza invites her to tag along with them since they were both going to the capital. She seems fine with it, so she joins them after lunch. On their way to the capital, Linza gives Tuya a magic spell dictionary and urges him to use it to learn the different spells he'll be needing to become a full-fledged mage. 
Tuya opens the dictionary and reads all there is to read about magic spells and whatnot. Lindsay and Elza also discuss a few things about elemental magic and all the gibberish it entails. Tuya checks out a useful magic spell from the book. He chants the spell and uses it to summon Ye's hairband to his arms. The girls are surprised and happy Tuya got the hang of things so well. After returning Ye's headband, Tuya gets right down to studying the remaining spells in the book. He amplifies his sense of smell using Elza's fortification magic and smells some blood in the atmosphere. He quickly informs Ye and rides toward the source of the scent. On getting there, they find some travelers getting attacked by a wizard. They immediately spring into action and destroy all the wizard's lizardmen. Once the assailant is down, they get to the wagon and find out Lime. One of the servants there was deeply injured with an arrow to the chest. Tuya uses his magic to remove the arrow from his chest and heal him completely. After making a full recovery in seconds, the passengers introduce themselves as Sushi Hernia Ortlinda and Lime, her servant. Almost immediately, Elsa and the others bow down to show their respect to the duke's daughter. Apparently, Sushi's father is the younger brother of the king of the nation. After showing their thanks, Tuya and the ladies follow Sushi and her details to the royal capital. A few hours later, they get to the royal castle. Sushi's dad, who's already been waiting for his daughter and the heroes who saved her, shows his deepest gratitude to Tuya and the ladies. At lunch, Tuya asks Alfred, Sushi's dad, if he knew who could have been after him. Alfred tells him it's probably some wizard or bandit who wants to extort money from him. Sushi joins them shortly and talks about her mother, Ellen. When asked to meet her, Alfred tells Tuya that he can't allow that because she's blind. If only they could find someone who can use null magic, then maybe the person would be able to restore Ellen's vision. Tuya, who can use all forms of magic, offers to try using null magic to restore Ellen's vision. He gets the dictionary and meets Ellen in her chambers. In front of the ladies and Alfred, Tuya uses his null magic to restore Ellen's vision. For the first time in a long time, Ellen can see her darling once again. The ladies immediately flock around Tuya to thank him for helping Ellen see. To show his gratitude, Alfred pays Tuya 40 platinum coins. Tuya does the conversion and finds out Alfred just handed him 40 million yen. Tuya tries to reject the gift. However, Alfred tells him to accept it as a show of good faith, as they'd be needing it on their way back to the village. Later on, as they leave town, Ye humbly asks to keep traveling alongside Tuya and the other ladies. Tuya has no choice but to accept her request so peace can reign. As they walk through the streets of the royal capital, Tuya and the other three ladies see a girl who looks lost. They approach her and ask her about her whereabouts. The girl, who's named Arma, tells Tuya and the others that she got lost from her elder sister. Tuya uses his smartphone to locate Arma's older sister and returns her. Tuya leaves his group and returns a few hours later wearing a coat that possesses some special magical affinity or something. He tells the time with his phone as they get back to the inn. It rains heavily by nighttime, so Tuya gets to watch the patron and his friend play a game of shogi on the board he created for them a few days ago. Tuya finds out the girls had to step out of the house in the rain just to go help people around town. At that moment, they return from their outing and bring presents for everyone, including the Duke. Tuya is tasked to deliver the roll cake to the Duke and his family in appreciation for their hospitality. Tuya uses the gate spell to transport himself to the royal palace to see the Duke. He gives his family the roll cake and a game of shogi. Alfred sits down to study the game while his daughter gets to watch them play. Soon, Sushi flares up and tickles Tuya into letting her play the game. Tuya gets to endure the torture from Sushi until it's late in the night. The next day, Tuya and the girls visit the guild to see what missions are available for them. Tuya suggests they defeat the Mega Slimes, but the girls object to it. He finds another mission and the girls accept it. They register themselves for the mission and immediately head into the woods. There, they come across several magical creatures and work together to defeat all of them. Once they're done, they settle down to rest a bit before searching for the treasure. Tuya uses his search spell to locate the history relic in a creepy cave system. Linza clears a path for them into the cave system, and they all get into the dark and creepy cave. Linza uses her illumination spell to create some light to navigate through the cave. After walking a few meters forward, they find some ancient writings on the wall in front of them. Tuya takes out his smartphone and takes pictures of the writings on the wall. They trace the writings to an earth spell stone. Since Tuya is the only person amongst them who can use the earth's elemental magic, the girls give him space to activate the mechanism. Tuya uses his power to activate the stone and opens a door to a closed hallway. They get into the hidden room and find a glass statue resting on a stone. As they fiddle with the glass statue to check something out, the stone comes alive. Tuya uses the gate spell to teleport himself and the ladies outside the cave. Sadly for them, the thing follows them and attacks. Tuya and the ladies all work together to launch several attacks on the glass thing, all to no avail. Tuya decides to try one thing. 
he uses a teleportation spell to pull the glass monster's red orb to his hands. Then he throws it towards Elza, who then shatters it in pieces. This plan works as the glass monster shatters into itself. Now that they've completed the mission, they get back to the royal palace to report their findings to the duke. The duke thanks them for their service and gets all the necessary information he needs about the monster. After their little meeting, Tuya takes them all back home. At the inn, Tuya makes copies of the pictures he took back in the ruins, and Gates himself goes back to Alfred's house to give him the copies. On getting there, he finds Alfred leaving his house in a rush. Apparently his brother and king of the empire had been poisoned. Alfred was on his way to the palace to investigate the situation and be with his brother in his last moments. Tuya tags along with Alfred to the palace. On his way, Alfred tells Tuya he suspects that his brother was likely poisoned by the people from the kingdom of Miss Mead. Since they're in serious competition with his brother's kingdom, poisoning the king so as to have a political marriage with his daughter, Princess Yumina wouldn't sound too far-fetched. Tuya gives the matter some serious thought and decides to say nothing until he sees things for himself. On getting to the palace, Count Balsa, a sleazy old man and servant to his majesty, greets them in a snide manner and tells them they caught the culprit. When asked, the Count tells Alfred the culprit is a messenger from the Miss Mead Kingdom. Alfred restrains the Count from doing anything to the messenger until the king gets back to life. Alfred takes Tuya to the king and allows him to use the recovery null magic on the king. Tuya's operation is successful, and the king is back up in no time. The king and his family thank him for his help to the king. Even the king's mage, the beautiful Charlotte, stops by to admire this handsome young mage who can use null magic. Tuya gets very nervous and accepts all the thanks. Now that the king is back to normal, it's time to find the culprit. They summon Olga Strand, the ambassador from the kingdom of Miss Mead, to the palace to explain herself. Tuya recognizes the girl as Arma's elder sister. He refuses to believe such a nice person could do something like that. So he asks the king to grant him access to the crime scene. On getting there, Tuya uses his search magic to find the poison around the room. He requests the king's subjects and Count Balsa to be summoned to the crime scene. On getting there, Tuya tells them the culprit is amongst them. Almost immediately, Count Balsa starts sweating. Tuya takes up the bottle of wine and proves to everyone that the king's glass was the one laced with poison and not the wine in the bottle. Count Balsa knows he's been made, so he tries to escape. However, Tuya stops him with his magic and exposes him. Princess Yumina gets very flustered at Tuya's intelligence as she keeps staring at him. After exposing the count, Tuya gets to have tea with the king and his family. As they discuss, Yumina announces Tuya as her betrothed. Tuya spits out his drink as Yumina's parents approve of their daughter's marriage immediately. Tuya tries to talk himself out of the marriage, saying he's too young. Nonetheless, the king and queen tell him they can wait till they're of age before getting them hitched up. Tuya can live with the decision, so he accepts to be Yumina's betrothed. After the meeting, Tuya receives a call from the maker, who congratulates him on his recent engagement. Tuya only mutters some words and ends the call. In the next scene, Tuya tells his people about his recent engagement. Yumina joins the girls and asks them to join their group and go with them on hunting missions. The group has no choice but to accept Yumina on their team. On their next guild mission, they take Yumina along with them. Yumina summons some wolves and tells them to go search the forest for the yetis. Soon, the yetis run out of their hiding place as they chase the wolves. Tuya and his team, who are already waiting for the yetis, use their magic spells to take all of them down. After completing their mission, Tuya commends his girls for being the cutest and yet the strongest girls he's ever seen. Following their chit-chat, Tuya and his team get back to town. After submitting the yetis for assessment and getting their cash, Tuya decides to form a pact with a heavenly beast. He summons one resembling a snow tiger and shows it his immense magical strength. The Snow Tiger has no choice but to succumb to his master's call. To complete the pact, the Snow Tiger asks Tuya to give it a name. Tuya names it Kohaku and seals the deal. Now, on to the next part. This time, Kohaku asks Tuya to let him stay near him at all times. Since he's too big to follow him, Kohaku transforms himself into a white cat. The ladies see the cute white cat and begin playing with it. On their next quest, the ladies are a bit worried seeing as they're to investigate slime monsters. Legend has it that these slime monsters are well known for melting women's clothing and exposing several parts of their bodies to perverts. This means good news for Tuya, so he encourages the girls to take heart and accept their new mission with all their hearts. Since they have no choice, the ladies continue their journey to the slime monster's location. Upon getting there, Tuya and the girls encounter their first slime monster. They keep moving into the building to the in-house library to find all they can about the slime monsters. The girls make sure to watch their every step so they don't run into the slime molds. Meanwhile, Tuya and his pet beast Kohaku keep warding off the green slimes they meet on the way. They try their very best to keep the slimes off themselves. Unfortunately, 
the odds were against the ladies as they all managed to slip and fall into the green slime. The green slime monsters do their thing and rip off parts of the ladies' clothing. Tuya uses his gate spell to bring them back to him as he fixates his eyes on their torn clothes. The girls get very embarrassed and punches him. After cleaning themselves up, Tuya and the ladies keep moving through the building to find more slimes. On the way, they find some female mannequins whose breasts appear to be moving. Turns out they were there to mimic a woman's breasts. The ladies destroy the slime monsters and keep moving further into the building. They get to the slime researcher's room and find other slime monsters there. These ones, however, transform into full-fledged humanoid females. The ladies quickly cover Tuya's eyes as they prepare the building for purification. By nightfall, they set the entire building on fire and finish their mission. The next day, Tuya takes Kohaku on a walk around town. They find Ye petting a little girl who seemed to have lost her mom somewhere. Tuya approaches her and uses his smartphone's map to find the girl's mother. After returning her to her mother, Tuya explains the science or magic behind the search with his phone. He tells Ye that he can use his phone's GPS locator to find anything in the world. Ye asks him to use it to scan the world for her brother and probably find out what he's doing. Tuya takes Ye to a restaurant and uses the GPS locator on his phone to find her brother. He tells her exactly what he's doing at that moment and makes her happy to hear her brother's still alive. After lunch, Tuya gets back to his room in the inn. He uses some magic spells on his phone and gives his camera the power to see through walls. He focuses the lens on the wall in front of him and sees Elsa in her underwear changing into her clothes. Just then, Linza visits him for some advice. Apparently, she's been having trouble reading new magic spells from her spell scroll written in ancient magic. Tuya helps her out by creating a spectacle that could read ancient magic spells. Linza puts the glasses on and finds out more spells she can use to reinforce her water spell. She gets the right spell and heads into the forest to test it out. She practices and fails the first few times. Then she rests and continues until she runs out of mana. Tuya helps refresh her mana and gives her enough confidence to figure out the spell by herself. Lindsay thinks hard about her mistakes and corrects them on her next try. She finally got the hang of the bubble bomb water magic technique. She uses the water spell on their next mission and helps defeat the monster easily. After the mission, Elza heads into the armory to buy her gauntlet back, seeing as she broke it in their last mission. On their way back, Tuya buys Elza a nice girly dress and forces her to put it on. Elza, who thinks a dress like that would be unfit for her, puts it on and looks gorgeous. On getting home, they get a letter from the royal palace summoning Tuya to the palace to be sworn as a knight for saving the king earlier on. Tuya asks if he could reject the offer and Yumina tells him he can. However, he'd have to state a reason for doing so in a public venue. Tuya sighs as he has no choice but to get to the palace. Tuya humbly rejects the king's offer to be a knight. The king still gives Tuya a mansion to thank him for helping the royal family. Tuya and the ladies get to the mansion to check it out. On getting there, Tuya invites them over to live in the mansion with him. The girls are very happy and hope they won't be intruding on Tuya and his future wife's living space. Tuya tells them he loves all four ladies the same way, just like his family. The girls check out the cool rooms in the mansion. Later on, their butler, Liam's father, and a few other servants arrive at the mansion to resume their responsibilities in upkeeping the mansion's well-being. After introducing themselves, the servants dispersed. Fast forward to a few hours' time, Alfred and his daughter Sushi pay Tuya a visit to his new house. As they sit at lunch, Alfred asks Tuya for a favor. He and his men want to use Tuya's gate spell to teleport themselves to Mismead. Since Tuya can't teleport himself to a place he hasn't seen before, Alfred asks him to travel there first. In the next scene, Tuya and his people all journey alongside some of Mismead's finest warriors to get to the royal capital of Mismead. They all assemble at the outer gate of the kingdom before embarking on their journey. To kill the boredom, Tuya and his girls play some board games. By nightfall, they make a campfire and Tuya tells them a story. As he finishes his story, Olga senses some bandits ambushing them to steal their goods. Tuya takes out his phone, marks all of them, and uses his paralysis spell to take out all the bandits hiding in the trees. They then gather them all and contemplate what to do with the bandits. While they talk, Tuya and his girl notice some chemistry between a certain knight, Knight Lion, and Olga. Sounds like Lion likes her and was too scared to confess to her. Tuya and the girls decide to help Lion get with Olga before they get to the capital. The next day, the group makes a stopover at a small town. Tuya, Yumina, and Arma spot Lion checking out some presents. They approach him and ask him who he was buying the souvenir for. Lion lies and tells them it's for his mother. Tuya refuses to break character. Arma stylishly tells Lion what her sister likes, and they all leave. Before they're out of sight, they peep over to Leon and find him buying that exact same thing. Later on, Tuya gets back to their wagons. There, Tuya senses something weird, 
almost like someone was following them. He tries using his magic to find them. However, the person conceals his aura. Soon they find Olga and see her wearing the hair accessory Lion bought her earlier. They continue their journey to the capital and encounter something big deep in the forest. Turns out a dragon had gone rogue and was attacking the town of Eld. Tuya and his people quickly rush to the town to protect it against the dragons. On getting there, the dragon insults Tuya and his beast. To punish it, Tuya immobilizes it and cuts off its wings. The dragon refuses to stop as it keeps spitting fire all around it. Eventually, the other girls arrive and help Tuya knock the dragon down completely. Before they get a chance to celebrate, a red dragon who rules over the sacred land comes by to take his rogue comrade. After finding out how much power Tuya has, he bows down and apologizes dearly for his comrade's behavior. Things go back to normal, and Tuya gets to rest on his fiancé's legs. He wakes up the next morning to find out the girls had bet on him while he was asleep. Although he's completely in blue over what the ladies are doing, Tuya just stands there and watches them do their thing. A few hours after waking up, Tuya and the ladies begin rebuilding the village. The rogue dragon destroyed the previous night. They make sure to cut off some parts of the dragon they slayed and donate them to the villagers to ensure they get their village back and running in the shortest time possible. The knights from Miss Mead, Leon, and his comrade are in awe over Tuya's willingness to help the village despite not being obliged to. That afternoon, the village elder gifts Tuya one of the dragon's fangs to thank him for his immense service to the village. Tuya is about to refuse it, but he remembers how useful the fang would be for his weapon modifications. Tuya collects the gift and continues his journey with his people to the kingdom of Mismade. Before nighttime, they arrive at the royal capital of Mismade. The king receives them with warm hands and commends Tuya for his help slaying the rogue dragon and helping one of his villages. After the necessary introductions, the King of Mismede finds out the Kingdom of Belfast, Tuya's kingdom, wishes to form an alliance with the Mismede Kingdom. The King receives the emissary from Belfast King and proposes a spar between himself and the Dragon Slayer, Tuya. Turns out Mismede's King is one of those who appreciate others' strength by fighting with them. Tuya prepares himself to fight the King of Mismede. When the fight begins, Tuya uses his null magic slip to make the King trip and fall, thus ending the matchup. Clearly the King can't have that so he demands a rematch. This time, things get serious between the two of them. Tuya tries some of the spells in his book, but the king appears to be too fast for him. At one point in the match, the king uses his null magic spell, Axel, which gives him a massive speed boost to attack Tuya. Tuya dodges the attack and uses the same Axel spell to give himself a massive speed boost. Both parties immediately disappear as they move at the speed of light. The only thing that could be seen is the flashes of their swords clanking each other. Eventually, Tuya overpowers the king and wins. That night, Tuya and his people attend a royal banquet hosted in their honor. There, Tuya takes out his smartphone to take pictures of the beautiful ladies in their radiant attires. The king gets fascinated by his cell phone and asks him to take his pictures as well. Tuya does so and gets very tired. He takes a break outside the hall. He finds a walking teddy bear in the corridor and follows it to a dark room. There he finds a 600. Year-old elder of the fairy folk, Lean, sitting on a chair across the room. After the necessary introductions, Lean reveals the null magic spell program she used to make the teddy move. Apparently, the program spell can be used to input commands into inanimate objects and make them follow the commands till completion. Tuya gets the spell right off the bat and impresses Lean. She asks him to be her apprentice, but Tuya makes a run for it. That night in bed, he gets the idea to use a program in building his new weapon. The next day, he takes the dragon's fangs from Eld Village and heads into the woods with Lindsay and Yumina. There, he uses a modeling spell to create a gun and some bullets from the fang and then uses the program spell to instruct the gun on how to reload automatically. His first few shots are off balance, so he does a few modifications and increases the gun's accuracy. Lindsay and Yumina ask for a gun. Tuya shows them a catalog online and tells them to choose the one they like. Then he further modifies his gun to be able to turn it into a sword at will. Following their creative session in the woods, Tuya and the ladies get back to town. They find a restaurant around town and prepare themselves to eat some curia, the traditional dish of Miss Med. However, before they get in, Tuya spots two people watching them. He coordinates with his beast and excels himself to the spies. On seeing him, they immediately scram. Tuya excels himself and catches up to them. After knocking them out, he accidentally holds one of his pursuers' chests. He finds out they've been followed by women. The ladies explain to Tuya that they were assigned by the king to follow them at all times. Tuya understands, so he lets them go. He gets back to the restaurant and eats the spicy dish curiae. The next day, Tuya uses the gate spell to teleport the king of Belfast and Alfred to Miss Mead's palace. 
In the ending scene, Lean promises to pay a visit to Belfast soon to see her apprentice, Charlotte. Now that his work in Miss Mead is done, Tuya teleports himself and the girls back to his mansion in Belfast. Lame and the other servants are there at the mansion to give them a warm welcome. Yumina gives her servants some beautiful souvenirs from the Miss Mead kingdom. Tuya settles down on his bed for the first time in days and falls asleep with his beast. He wakes up late in the evening to take a bath. He then steps out to take a bath and walks to the changing room. He finds the ladies in their underwear and gets scolded for it. The girls make sure Tuya never does such a thing in his life again. After taking his scolding, Tuya steps outside to continue practicing his spells. Alfred arrives shortly to pay him a visit. He asks Tuya what he was doing, and Tuya tells him he's trying to make a bicycle. Clearly, Alfred hasn't seen a bicycle in his life, so he thanks Tuya for his help with the Miss Mead thing and waits for Tuya to get the bicycle done in time so he could ride it. In 30 minutes' time, Tuya finishes his first bicycle. Alfred tries to ride the bike for the first time and falls down a few times. Soon, the ladies notice the ruckus in the yard outside. They find the Duke of the Kingdom riding a bike and decide to join him and learn. In a few hours, the ladies turn the bike riding thing into a competition. Elsa gets very competitive with the others and makes sure to ride the bike faster than her sister. They eventually catch up to the Duke and race him. Tuya just stands there watching them all until something bad happens. After a fun ride riding and falling off bikes, Alfred asks Tuya to make one more bicycle. Tuya gets into town to get more material supplies. On his way there, he finds a young lady getting mugged in an alleyway. Naturally, Tuya helps her out and knocks the crooks out with his gun. The lady thanks him for rescuing her and asks if he has some food. Turns out she was pickpocketing from the crooks and was about to get punished. Tuya takes Rennie, the girl, to a bench outside and buys her some snacks. Apparently, the poor girl is an orphan who has no choice but to sleep in the streets. Tuya asks her to come work in his mansion so she can get paid. Ren appreciates his request and follows him back to the mansion. There, Ren changes into some maid's clothes and becomes a servant of Tuya. The other maids come in and take her away so she can start learning how to be a maid. Tuya figures he forgot to get the bike materials, so he gets back to town with the ladies to get the supplies. There, they find Arma and join her to continue shopping. They find Lion and Olga, Arma's sister, walking together. They follow the two and spy on them. As they watch from the corners, Tuya and the ladies find out how shy Lion was to hold Olga's hands. The ladies ask Tuya why men get so shy toward them. Tuya politely ignores them and just keeps watching over Lion and Olga. They follow them to a restaurant to spy on them. Tuya takes out his phone and uses his x-ray cameras to watch the two. Olga seems to be having a very good time as her face lights up red. After their date, Olga steps out of the restaurant. Arma rushes to go meet her sister. However, she runs into the king of Miss Mead. Miss Mead's king joins the teens and spies on Lion and Olga. Lion keeps getting hesitant to touch Olga, and this disgusts the king of Miss Mead. Soon, some crooks attack the stalls near them. Lion stands up to the crooks and challenges them. Tuya and the king get very scared of Lion, so they put on disguises to avoid getting caught. Unfortunately for them, Lion sees through their disguises and figures out it's them. Tuya gets tired of spying on them and outrightly makes Lion confess his feelings for Olga right away. Thankfully, Olga feels the same and agrees to go out with him. After their victory, Tuya gets back to his mansion and finds Lean and her apprentice, Charlotte. Tuya asks her what she's here for, and Lean tells him she's there to ask him about the red orb monster he destroyed a few weeks back. She narrates that the red orb belonged to magical beasts with translucent bodies called phrases. Tuya tells her he'd keep an eye for one. Lean spills the bad news to Tuya and his people. Turns out she'll be staying in Belfast for a while. She asks Tuya for a favor to take her to an ancient ruin in Eshin, Ye's homeland. To get an idea of where the place is, Lean tells Tuya to use the recall spell to find a memory of Eshin in Ye's brain. Tuya gets close to Ye and uses recall to find the streets of Eshin. After the ritual, Lean asks him to open a gate to that place. Tuya opens a gate and teleports Lean and the girls to the ruins in Eshin. After teleporting himself and the ladies to Eshin, Tuya leads everyone to the Oedo, Yae's hometown in Eshin. As they walk through the sullen town, Yae explains her land's culture to her listeners. Elza and Linza find out life's a bit different in Eshin compared to Belfast. Later on, Yae leads her people to her father's house in town. On getting there, she notices the worried looks on her mother's face and asks her about her father's whereabouts. Ye's mother tells her her father, brother, and the rest of the able men in the town left a few days back to fight the Takeda clan's army. Ye gets very worried and asks her mom about the war. Unfortunately, things weren't going too well for Oedo's men, as the Takeda army was very strong. Tuya and the rest of the group offer to help the Oedians fight the Takeda clan. Tuya uses a gate spell to teleport himself and the girls to an area in the woods near the Oedo fortress. Ye gets very restive and asks Tuya to take her to her brother. However, Tuya senses danger ahead, so he heads to the fortress first. On getting there, Jutaro, Ye's brother, and a few other soldiers challenge Tuya, asking who he is and where he's from. Tuya introduces himself as Ye's friend and teleports the others directly into the fortress. Soon, 
Ye reconnects with her brother. Judarao thanks Tuya for his service and tells his sister that their dad is doing just fine protecting the king. Tuya uses his light spell and heals all of Oedo's wounded soldiers. Then he asks Yutaro about the Takeda army laying siege to their fortress outside. Jutaro tells him his men are having trouble killing the Takeda's army as they are now zombies. Jutaro also tells Tuya they found out the zombie army can only be taken out if they manage to break the oni masks on their faces. Almost immediately, Tuya uses the light spell, shining javelin to take down all the Takeda zombies in front of the fortress. The Oedians let out a victorious cry and thank their savior, Tuya. Soon, Iisha, head of Tokugawa's, shows up to personally thank Tuya and his crew for helping them out with the zombie army. Then they speak business. As it turns out, Shingen, the real leader of the Takeda clan, had already passed away. The zombie army that attacked them earlier on was led by his dark magic strategist. Iisha tells Tuya that they still haven't verified the authenticity of the news yet, but they'd keep investigating. Just then, one of the four Takeda generals, General Kusaka's warrior, Tsubaki, arrives with a secret letter from her master. The letter was asking for Iyesha's help in rescuing the other three generals captured deep in Takedan territory. Tuya decides to infiltrate the base stealthily before striking. He asks Lean the fairy if she could turn them invisible for a short time so they could get there without raising any alarms. Tuya picks those that'll follow him and reads Tsubaki's mind to get a clear picture of where they're going. That night, Tuya teleports himself just outside Takedan territory. Once Lean turns him invisible, he tries teleporting into the enemy territory. However, he's stopped as the barrier erected prevents him from entering. Lean gets very naughty and plays with Tsubaki's boobies. Since they're invisible, she pins the crime on Tuya. Tsubaki let out moans as she was both embarrassed and enjoying herself. Tuya cuts the crap and gets his three-man team into the Takedan dungeon. He frees all the three captured generals and heads out to destroy the talismans holding Takeda's barrier up. After destroying them all, Tuya takes out all the Oni masked soldiers around them and teleports them all to the Dark Strategist, who turns out to be waiting for them. On getting there, the Strategist turns their dead comrade, Oyakata, against them. Tuya takes him down and faces the enemy. The Strategist unveils the red orb he has in his eyes and boasts of having all the power in the world. Tuya uses the Apport spell to retrieve the orb and destroy it. Almost immediately, the Strategist's body withers into dust and he dies. The next day, Iisha tells Tuya the Ninuya ruins are located in the seabed. He also mentions he's been on an island near the ruins before and still remembers it. Tuya uses recall to get the island's location from Aisha's head and then uses gate to teleport himself and the ladies to the exact beach closest to the location of the ruins. Once they get to the beach, Tuya and the ladies all rush in to enjoy the cool beach. Since they don't have swimsuits, they ask Tuya to take them all back to Belfast so they could get some. Tuya obliges to their request and teleports them back to Belfast to get swimsuits. They return to the beach with the Duke, the King, and some other servants to take some time off their heavy duties. Tuya creates some tents for the ladies to change inside. Now that everyone's inside their swimsuits, they get back to the beach to join the others. The ladies all face Tuya to seek his validation over their bodies in the swimsuits. After a few embarrassing moments with Tuya, the ladies go for a swim in the ocean. With so many breasts everywhere, Tuya can't help but look at the soft, cuspy chests of the ladies. Soon, Sushi and Arma also join the ladies in the water to play some beach ball. Tuya gets so fixated on his girls in the water that he doesn't see Cecil behind him. When he looks back, his gaze goes down to her chest. Tuya gets himself a good look at the things he may never touch, and allows Cecile to join the girls in the water. Tuya suddenly hears men shouting somewhere around and traces the sound. Turns out the king and his brother were also having a race of their own. He gets back to his tent and relaxes himself. Yumina approaches him in her nice swimsuit and asks him to join her in the ocean. However, Tuya refuses to join her and would rather search for the ruins. Yumina understands and leaves. Just then, Lean meets with Tuya and teases him again. Once she's done having her fun, she tells Tuya they have to get back to investigating the ruins. Lean cannot swim, so Tuya decides to check it out himself. He dives into the ocean but couldn't hold his breath long enough. Thankfully, Kohaku, his beast, was there to save him before he drowned. After regaining consciousness, Tuya and Lean ask Charlotte if she knew of a spell that could make someone breathe underwater. Charlotte couldn't remember any spell that could do that. Suddenly, Kohaku remembers the beasts of the Black Monarch. Tuya and Kohaku immediately get on with summoning the beasts. They cast a summoning spell into the ground and summon the great beasts of the Black Monarch to their world. When the beasts arrive, they remember their old friend and ask after his master. On hearing that Tuya was Kohaku's master, they challenge him to a fight to prove his strength. If Tuya wins, they'll form a pact with him. Tuya takes out his gun and programs one of the bullets with a slip spell that activates infinitely. As a result, the Black Monarch beasts keep tripping and falling until they give up. In the meantime, 
the ladies play volleyball a few yards away from Tuya. After making a wonderful play, Linz's chest cloth comes off. She quickly puts it on before Tuya sees it fall. A few hours into the day, the black monarch beasts get tired and surrender to Tuya. After hearing his request, the beasts shrink their size and activate a water protection spell on their new master. Tuya gets covered in the protective bubble and walks toward the ocean. On his way to the ocean, the four ladies all line up and ask Tuya to pick his favorite woman out of all of them. Tuya gets flustered and chooses Sushi instead. The girls are disappointed, but they suck it up and join him to play. By evening time, Tuya gets to the ocean floor and walks under the water like he was on land. He enters the ruins and activates a magic circle inside it. The mechanism triggers a teleportation system that takes Tuya to a floating island. On getting there, a humanoid machine named Francesca approaches him without wearing anything under her waist. She introduces herself and welcomes Tuya to the 5000-year-old aerial garden. Tuya asks Francesca why she isn't wearing anything under her waist. Cheska tells him that's how she was programmed by her master. Tuya asks her if she could put something on. Cheska takes out a skirt and puts it on. Tuya then asks her about the entire place. Turns out the floating island is called the Garden of Babylon and was built by a professor several thousand years ago. Cheska mentions that she's an android robot built to take care of the garden in her master's absence. Following the explanation, Cheska gets very sensual and keeps asking Tuya to touch her down in her private area. Of course, Tuya refuses to touch the freak. Tuya introduces himself as Tuya, of course. Cheska tells Tuya that the island was created 5,000 years ago by Professor Babylon, a powerful mage who could use all the elemental magic. She put Cheska in charge of the garden's maintenance until a visitor came by and claimed ownership of the garden. Since Tuya is the only visitor the garden has received in the last 5,000 years, he has to take over. Cheska explains why she would gladly hand it over to him. Apparently, if Tuya had been sensual with her from the start, she would have rejected him. However, since he didn't give in to his lusts, he gets eligible to take over the garden. Tuya sweats and wonders who created Cheska. Cecile and the other ladies all play on the beach searching for crabs and other small crustaceans. At one point, they all get worried over Tuya and wonder whether or not he's doing fine. Speaking of the devil, Tuya appears right that moment and brings them all to the garden with his gate spell. Now inside the floating island, Cheska lets all the girls know that ownership of the floating island has now been transferred to her loving master and husband, Tuya. The four girls demand an explanation from Tuya. To make matters worse, Cheska tells the girls that she showed her underwear to Tuya. Linza, who's the shy one, sits Tuya down and starts interrogating him. Lean steps into his defense and tells Linza not to judge Tuya too much. He probably doesn't know how the ladies feel about him, so he's not obliged to stick to them. Linza understands and stops oppressing Tuya. Later on, the four girls, Yai, Linze, Elza, and Yumina, all walk through a section of the garden. Yumina stops them and reminds them of a discussion they had back in the mansion. As it turns out, Yumina knows that the other three ladies are in love with Tuya. She proposes that all four of them confess their feelings to Tuya and marry him all at once. The ladies get very flustered with their faces all reddened with embarrassment and blushes. Yumina tells them now's the day they confess their feelings to Tuya and ask for his hand in marriage. Tuya's got him Riz. The three ladies were already imagining Tuya marrying all four of them. They make up their mind to confess and continue walking. In the meantime, Tuya and Lean enjoy their time in the garden together. Cheska tells Tuya and Lean about the remaining floating islands the professor created in her leisure time. Lean picks up some interest in the floating library and wishes to learn about the professor's secrets. The other ladies join them later on and listen to Cheska talk about the other islands. Lean asks Cheska if she could establish a connection with her other sisters. Unfortunately, Cheska says her connections with the other islands have been severed. So the only way to find the other Babylons is to find their teleportation circles. Cheska decides to leave the garden and follow her new master. Tuya gets worried about her leaving the garden. However, Cheska tells him not to worry that they'll be able to control the garden once he finishes his registration. Tuya asks Cheska how they'll get it, and she kisses him in front of everyone. While kissing him, Cheska gets Tuya's saliva and records it as his genetic information. Once she's done, Linza summons the courage to stand up and confess her feelings to Tuya before planting a kiss on his lips. All that's left now is for Elza and Ye to confess their feelings to Tuya so they can be free. After exploring the rest of the garden, Cheska follows Tuya and the remaining ladies back home. She joins the servants, dresses up like them, and joins Liam to begin her training to be a maid. Tuya gets to his room to think a little about what happened between him and Linza back in the garden. Before he falls asleep, Yumina visits him to talk. Tuya lets her into his room and asks what she was there for. Yumina immediately flares up and lets Tuya know she's angry at him for kissing Cheska and Linza so easily. She's just jealous because Tuya hasn't kissed her before. Tuya gets surprised that she isn't affected by Linza's confession. Yumina tells him she was the one who actually encouraged Linza to confess her feelings to him. The only reason she is angry at him is because he hasn't kissed her. To make it up to her, 
Tuya brings her close to himself and plants a soft kiss on Yumina's lips. After the kiss, she asks him what he thinks of Linze. Tuya says although he may not love Linze, he still likes and cherishes her. Almost immediately, Linze materializes in the room. Turns out she's been turned invisible and was watching over them all this while. Tuya gets to her and properly confesses his feelings for her. Linza thanks him for being honest with her and hugs him. Yumina also gets close and hugs her husband-to-be. Before they leave, they ask Toya to kiss them. Toya kisses their forehead and goes to sleep. The next day, Elza wakes Toya up and takes him to the yard outside to face her and Ye. Toya asks the ladies what they're after. Elza and Ye both order Toya to fight them right there. If they win, Toya would have to listen to their request. However, if he wins, they'd back down and never talk about their feelings for Tuya. They also prohibit Tuya from using any magical spells before beginning the fight. Tuya gets the upper hand in the first hand of the fight. However, the ladies manage to corner and knock him out. When he wakes up, Elza and Yae both confess their feelings to Tuya. Yumina and Linza join them in the yard and ask Tuya to make his decision. Tuya begs them for more time and heads back to the floating garden to think. Cheska joins him and has a discussion with him. She mentions to him that she has a message from the professor to him. Tuya asks her to show him the message, and she brings out a USB cord from her arms. Tuya plugs the cord into his phone and activates the message. A hologram of the professor appears on his phone. She tells him about her power to see several thousand years into the future. In one of her visions, she found out about the phrase dragons who were hell-bent on ridding the world of all living things. When asked where they were now, the professor tells Tuya the phrases suddenly disappeared. Tuya asks if she knows about his future with the four girls. The professor refuses to tell him. Instead, she leaves him to fantasize about what may happen and ends the message. After receiving the message, Tuya teleports himself to the heavens to meet the Maker. The Maker is more than happy to see his creation again. Tuya asks for some advice on his issue with the ladies. The Maker summons the Queen of Love in the heavens to give Tuya the best advice she can. After hearing the matter, the Queen of Love tells him to get a little selfish and asks the four of them to give him time to develop and mature into a man they'll all love and cherish. I mean, they're still 16 at best. When I was their age, I was still in school. Anyways, Tuya gets back to his mansion and tells the ladies to give him time to mature into a real man before getting married. The ladies all agree to wait for Tuya. To end their meeting, Tuya would have to kiss all their foreheads before leaving them. Elza goes first but ends up punching him in the stomach. Outside the building, Lean and a few other servants give themselves a good laugh over what's happening inside the room. Tuya takes his ladies to their next quest. This time, they have to defeat the mithril golems and take their control orbs back to the guild. Ye tries to slash them with her sword, but her sword breaks. Tuya figures out how strong they are, so he teleports them up into the sky and lets them free fall to the ground. This plan works as the golems' bodies crack and become more vulnerable. With that, Tuya and the ladies direct the strongest magic attacks in their arsenal and eventually take down the mithril golems. After retrieving the golem orbs, Tuya teleports his girls back home. Rene, the orphan Tuya saved earlier, warmly greets Tuya and his girls. She notices someone absent and asks Tuya where Cheska was. Tuya suddenly remembers he left her in the garden and gets back to retrieve her. Once they're back, Cheska serves Tuya and Lean some tea. Tuya apologizes and wishes to make it up to her. Cheska tells him to get her some sultry underwear so she'll forget about his sins. Turns out she was just joking. Cheska leaves shortly and allows Tuya to discuss with Lean. Lean tells Tuya she plans on getting to the other floating islands Professor Babylon built. Tuya, who already gave up on finding them, promises to help out. Just then, he receives a phone call from the Maker. Tuya teleports himself to the heavens. The Maker called him to ask for a status update on his life. Tuya tells the Maker that things are going just fine and even better than his old life. The Queen of Love stops by and teases him about his recent engagement to his four fiancés. In the meantime, the ladies are seen taking a bath in the mansion. Yumina and the girls stare at the engagement ring Tuya bought and gave to each and every one of them. They thank Tuya for infusing some helpful magic spells into the ring so the girls don't run into trouble. As they blush over the rings, Yumina tells them about her worries. Seeing as Tuya is such a good person, she fears some other woman might take advantage of that in due time and cause Tuya to turn bad. They all promise each other to support Tuya any way they can. In the next scene, Ye and Tuya go into town to get some supplies. As they browse the shops, Ye gets nervous and asks Tuya to hold hands with her while walking. Tuya succumbs to her request and holds her hands before continuing their shopping. Later during the day, Yumina and Tuya pay the king a visit in his palace to announce their engagement. The king of Belfast gets very happy and asks Tuya to get married quickly so he could get his grandchildren. The queen, however, lets Tuya know that there will be others who don't think highly of him, so he should be ready to fight for Yumina when the time comes. Yumina's little sister asks to join the discussion so she can greet her elder sister. When they get back home, Tuya asks Yumina if there's a chance he'd be king once they get married. Yumina tells him not to worry about anything like that in the meantime. 
Tuya begins to focus on setting an accomplishment so he can earn the favor from others. To do this, he gets to the local inn in town and builds a men and women's hot spring there to increase customers. To test it out, he brings his family members and some old people to try out the springs. Soon, the ladies are on the woman's side and the men are on their side enjoying themselves. While Yumina and the girls undress, Yumina challenges the ladies to talk about the time they knew they were in love with Tuya. With embarrassing looks on their faces, the ladies narrate the moments they knew they had feelings for Tuya. Yumina goes last and they all agree that Tuya is the man of their dreams. As they laugh over their feelings, Cheska, who was taking a bath outside, starts climbing the fence over them to get to Tuya's side. Luckily, the paralyzed spell on top of the fence shocks her and throws back to the women's section. Lean barges into the men's side of the hot springs to tell Tuya she's found the next Babylon floating island. Tuya and the ladies head east of Miss Mead to the Rabbi Desert to find the ruins to the second floaty island of Babylon. Tuya looks indifferent about finding the island and just wishes they would find the island and get back home soon. Although he admits that they may need the power of the second Babylon should the phrase monsters return to Earth in his era. As they peer towards the desert, they find a UFO attacking some people on the desert sand. Tuya and the others quickly stop their journey to help them out. They face the UFO object and buy the people on the ground enough time to escape its grasp. Tuya and his girls keep directing magic attacks towards the thing, but it turns out to be too strong. Just then, Ende, Tuya's old friend, makes a rather surprising appearance. After the necessary hellos and his, he gets on the UFO thing and destroys it. Tuya is surprised and asks him how he destroyed such a thing. Ende tells him he just hit it with a magic frequency similar to its own. Ende explains further that the UFO probably slipped into Tuya's world from another world, and that the multi-dimensional net keeping the world separate was starting to slack off. Ende finishes his explanation and takes his leave shortly. Tuya and his ladies serve the adventurers some water to quench their thirst. Their leader, Rebecca, explains she and her partner rescued some girls from their slave masters and were seeking to take them to greener pastures. Tuya asks them where they wish to go. Rebecca tells him they first of all have to remove the enslavement collars on their necks of the girls so they can truly be free. Tuya smiles and uses the apport spell to take off the collars off the slave girls. Yumina steps in and tells the girls to follow them to Belfast to make a living. Everyone agrees, so Tuya teleports them to Belfast. On getting back home, Lean asks Tuya about Enda. Turns out Tuya found Enda when he was out to buy the engagement rings. He had helped Enda pay for his stuff as he couldn't pay with an old coin he had. Lean gets very suspicious of the guy and tells Tuya to be very careful about him. The girls ask Tuya for an explanation about the thing they attacked earlier on. Tuya tells them about the Fraza and their history with Earth. He also tells them it's possible the phrase they fought earlier that day was from another other world. Tuya asks Cheska if there was anything the professor built to fight the phrase monsters. Cheska tells him there are such things. However, they're only stored in the next Babylon thereafter. Tuya gets very excited and immediately teleports himself and the ladies to the rabbi desert. Lean uses magic to expose the invisible barrier around the ruin and allows Tuya to get in first. Inside, Tuya gets to the magic circle and activates the teleportation mechanism there. He teleports himself to the next floating Babylon island, the workshop island, and meets with the guardian, Rosetta. Rosetta stops him in his tracks and asks for some form of verification before he's allowed to take over the workshop island. Tuya tells her he's already taken over the garden island owned by Cheska. Rosetta smiles and tells him things will be much easier since he's already experienced. Tuya asks for his test, and Rosetta tells him to guess the colors of the undies without moving from where he is. Tuya uses his long scent spell to shift his vision under her skirt. He finds out she wasn't wearing anything under and tells it to her. Rosetta confirms his answer and appoints him as the new master of the workshop island. She kisses him just like Cheska did and completes his registration. After the horrific processing, Tuya checks the workshop out. He discovers various interesting things about this island. Rosette shows him a white room that allows any engineer to manufacture anything he chooses with just a few taps. To test it out, Tuya asks Rosette to copy his gun and reproduce it using mithril material, just that, and creates a similar gun with the copy technique. Tuya asks her if she could create an equipment called the frame gears. However, Rosette says she can't since she doesn't have the blueprints. Up next, Tuya uses gate to bring the others to the workshop island. He asks Cheska and Rosetta if they could merge both islands together. Cheska and Rosetta agree to Tuya's idea and begin heading towards Belfast. Upon getting back to the mansion, Tuya tells Rebecca they can stay at the mansion till they find befitting jobs for themselves in town. Rebecca and her partner thanks Tuya for his kindness. A few days later, Tuya visits Rebecca and the girls in their new workplace. He just finished building his library right around town, so he lets them work in the cafe. Everyone greets him warmly and welcomes him to have a drink. Tuya thinks about how successful his bicycle business has gotten. 
He'd used the workshop in Rosetta's Island to mass produce the bicycles and sell them at a higher price. One of the freed slaves complains to Tuya about not having any magic aptitudes even though his grandpa could use null magic. Tuya tells the little guy to keep trying and not give up. His magic aptitudes are sure to appear in due time. After his visit to the library, Tuya heads to the guild with Yumina to register for any quest available. On getting there, the attendant recognizes him and asks him if he could help her with a book about the Order of Rose from his library. On their way back, Yumina explains all she can about the Order of Rose and tells Tuya about the author of the series, who's also her close friend and princess of the Refreeze Imperium, Rain Riri Refreeze. After hearing all the information about the author, Tuya decides to go exterminate the bloody crab in the desert first before getting the book. He carries Yumina straight to the forest and finishes it off in a matter of minutes. They carry the crab back to the guild and get their rewards. Yumina's guild rank gets upgraded and she's now on the same level as Tuya. After getting his reward, Tuya asks the guild attendant to list all the books she thinks she and her colleagues would be interested in reading so he could get it from them in his library, all bills on him. The lady writes over 20 books on a piece of paper and gives it to Tuya. Tuya goes to a bookshop and gives the attendant the list. Although it takes a few hours to find all those books from the huge catalog, Tuya manages to find them all. As he's about to cash in and leave for his own library, he hears a customer throwing a tantrum after finding out the women's famous book, Rose Magi, was out of stock. She finds out Tuya bought the last book and asks him to please let her buy the last one. Tuya refuses to release the book for her, so she proposes a deal with him. If he can release the Rose Magi for her, she'll give him an autograph. Tuya thinks she's just another nobody trying to trick him. However, he sounds her out and finds out she's actually the real Princess Real Refreeze. He gets disgusted at her rural behaviors and tells her about Yumina. Riel finds out Tuya is Yumina's fiancé and keeps quiet. Tuya heads over to the workshop and prints another version of the Rose Magi. Then he gives it to Riel and gets the books to his library. The ladies are very happy for the help as they pick up their books and leave. Tuya turns to the little boy who was complaining earlier on and asks him what he wants. The boy tells him he wants to get very strong so he can protect someone very dear to him. As he talks, the little boy makes eye contact with one of the freed slave girls working at the receptionist desk opposite. Tuya notices some chemistry between them and figures out she's the one he wants to protect. He takes the little boy to the palace and asks the head of the knights at the palace to train him. He meets with Linza and takes her to the Silver Moon Hot Springs to cool off before ending the day. The owners of the inn thank him greatly for helping them out with the hot springs. After a hot bath, Tuya buys Linze a nice dress. She puts it on and looks absolutely radiant in it. Linze gets very nervous in the outfit and trips. Tuya's there to catch her. He makes sure to tell her how beautiful she looks in the outfit. The day ends on a good note. A few days later, Riri released her next series. Tuya checks out the first volume and finds out the story is somehow similar to his. He promises to deal with her the next time he meets her as he gets understandably upset about things. In the first scene, Tuya finds Linza reading again. He advises her to take breaks when needed and avoid overreading. Linza thanks her fiancé for his kind words and gives him the list of books the library needs. Tuya gets the list and heads to the Empire to get the books. On getting there, Tuya finds the entire Empire in ruins. He races towards the palace to figure out what was wrong with the Empire grounds. On his way there, he finds the army attacking a local policeman. He rescues the policeman and finds out the army general may be staging a coup d'etat on the Empire. He quickly races to the palace and hears a lady screaming somewhere nearby. He locates the sound of the scream and rushes to the room to save the Emperor's daughter from certain death. The Emperor's daughter Lucia falls in love with him immediately after seeing his beautiful eyes. Soon, the guard on her detail Carol stops by and thanks Tuya for saving the daughter. Tuya explains to them that he used teleportation magic to come to the Empire so he could buy some things for his shop. On hearing this, Carol begs him to teleport himself and them to the Emperor's bedchambers to check up on him. When they get there, they find the Army General Bezoar standing over the unconscious body of the Emperor. Tuya introduces himself and where he's from, and demands an explanation from the Emperor's assailant. Bazor tells him the Emperor fell dangerously ill and couldn't be allowed to rule anymore. Taoya knows that's a lie, so he asks for a real explanation. The General tells him he plans on waging war against the three allied nations, Refreeze, Belfast, and Mismede. Tuya dares him to do so, telling him how powerful the three nations are. However, Bazaar had an ace up his sleeve. He uses his magic to summon the devilish beast he made a pact with for the past 20 years and reveals the source of his power. Apparently, Bazaar was wearing two bracelets on both hands, one for repelling magic attacks and the other for repelling physical attacks. The beast could also nullify magic attacks too. This isn't a fight Tuya could just rush into. 
So he retreats and teleports himself, the Emperor, Lucia, and Carol back to his mansion in Belfast. Tuya explains his ordeal at the Empire to his fiancés. They all wonder how they could face such a strong opponent. Tuya tells them they shouldn't worry, and that he has a plan to take down the Emperor. After their short meeting, Tuya introduces Lucia to his fiancés. When Yumina introduces herself as Tuya's fiancé, Lucia frowns. Yumina catches her reaction and challenges her when Tuya's gone. Tuya requests a meeting with the King of Belfast and explains the situation in the Empire to him. Before they discuss anything serious, the king makes a joke about appointing Tuya as the next in line to the throne. Tuya almost pees his pants as he never wants to be king. The king, after hearing Tuya's plan to defeat Bazawar, gives him the go-ahead. Tuya gets to the workshop to talk to Rosetta about Bazawar's weapons. Rosetta tells him she remembers having such items as artifacts in the workshop. They probably fell or got lost somewhere along the way. Tuya gets back to his mansion and finds out the emperor's awake. Everyone flocks around the emperor to discuss defeating the general. While they discuss, Lucia asks Tuya to help her find her brother with his magic spells if he could. Tuya uses recall on Lucia and gets a picture of her brother. After getting an image of her brother, Tuya recognizes him and traces him with his smartphone. The Emperor remembers that area as General Romeo's mansion. Thankfully, the Imperial Prince is safe. On to the next mission at hand. Tuya tells the Emperor to leave defeating Bazaar to himself and the girls. The next day, Tuya summons his beasts and takes them to the Empire to fight the General. While the ladies and the beast take care of the guards, Tuya faces Bazaar's magic devilish beast. Surprisingly, he uses Axel and Gravity, a spell that makes things heavier, to immobilize Bazaar's beast, the Demon Lord. Then he faces Bazaar and traps him in a tempered glass cell of rotten slime. Bazaar suffocates and passes out. Tuya had just defeated the general in the funniest of ways. The Empire gets back to its kingdom and formally addresses its people. The Imperial Prince is reunited with his family, and Tuya gets back to his girls. Lucia joins them and finds out how fun it is to be a fiancé of Tuya's. The Emperor invites Tuya for lunch one day to formally express his gratitude for his help in bringing down Bezoar. To thank him for his help, he decides to betroth Lucia to Tuya. Tuya frowns as he thinks of a way to reject the engagement. However, Yumina speaks for him and accepts the proposal on his behalf. Tuya is left with no choice but to accept his new fiancé into his household. Man's Riz is contagious, not gonna lie. So that's how Tuya got a fifth wife. The other ladies rejoice over having another woman join them. Tuya, on the other hand, is not so joyous as he's now gotten too many dudettes on his hands. Anyways, he does a little bit of talking with the kings who tell him about the portions of land the emperor is gifting to him. So the plan is to give Tuya some portions of land and name him ruler of the new kingdom. This way, Tuya will have some status and would look befitting to marry Yumina and the others. Tuya accepts the offer to become a monarch and gets back to his mansion. His wives express their joy over their husband's new achievements. They ask him what name he plans on naming his new kingdom. Tuya calls his new kingdom Brunhild and the ladies like it. Tuya wonders whether it'll be a good idea to teleport the entire mansion to the new kingdom. However, the girls tell him to leave the mansion to be their base of operations in Belfast. As they discuss, Lucia arrives in her new dress and joins the family meeting. She suggests they build a castle on the land so Tuya would be a true ruler. Tuya and the others agree to that. In the next scene, they head to the workshop of Babylon and work with Rosetta to build the new castle. Rosetta explains all the materials they'd be needing to build a brand new castle. The list goes on and on until Tuya gets tired. They remember an abandoned castle in a ruined kingdom and loot it for supplies. In a few days, Tuya builds his castle using the materials they looted and some modeling magic. Tuya and his girls visit the castle for the first time. Lean joins them and makes herself at home. Soon the servants come by and set up their workstations in the castle. Tuya makes sure to build a teleportation portal between his castle and the mansion in Belfast so they could transport themselves much easier. He and Rena try the portal out. On getting to the mansion, Tuya finds out he's been summoned to the king's palace. He gets to the palace and meets with the ruler of Refries, Rick Refries. Turns out the word of Tuya's new kingdom has spread to the far reaches of Refries. Rick wishes to check out his new castle with the King of Belfast. Tuya takes them to his new castle and lets them loose. He keeps wondering about the best indoor recreational sport to add to his castle and can't come up with any. He keeps thinking his wives would destroy them all. Nonetheless, he creates all of them and also adds a spa for them to cool off when need be. Later in the day, Tsubaki visits Tuya and asks to serve under his leadership. Tuya asks her about the Takadans and she narrates that they've already separated. Tsubaki tells him the new lord neglected the populace and had his lands taken away from him by powerful nations. So with no land to their name, Tsubaki thought she could bring her remaining people to live with Tuya in his new kingdom. Tuya agrees to this and lets them all into his kingdom. Today, Tuya meets with the people who thank him greatly for letting them stay in his kingdom. He meets with Master Kusaka, 
and discusses building the entire nation with him. With that, Kusaka becomes Brunhild's urban planner. In a couple of scenes, Brunhild goes from just a castle to have a few houses for her new citizens. Tuya's magic also makes things easier as he uses it to build such structures in minutes. Lucia has a difficult time adjusting to her new life as Tuya's betrothed. She expresses her concerns to the ladies, but they tell her she'll soon get used to it. She packs up some lunch for her husband and meets him in town. Tuya collects the lunch from her and eats it voraciously. Soon, he invites monarchs from other kingdoms to have fun in his new castle. Everyone has a fun-filled day as they eat, drink, and play games while away time. By nightfall, Tuya takes everyone outside to see the fireworks. The monarchs were very surprised and impressed that Tuya had knowledge of such things. Tuya walks over to Lucia and gives her an engagement ring. Lucia's face lights up with joy as Tuya puts the ring on her finger and holds her hand. Toy and his girls embark on a journey to find what seems to be the next ruin of Babylon. On getting there, they find a weird structure with a hole in its head. Tuya enters the hole and gets inside the ruins. He sights the magic circle and teleports himself to the alchemy ward of Babylon, led by Flora. Now Flora is a robot with a big chest, so Tuya is naturally attracted to her. He tells her he's already taken over the workshop in the garden, so he's there to take over the alchemy ward if she doesn't mind. Flora gets very happy and tells Tuya she has to test his validity to rule for herself. To do this, she holds Tuya's hand and places it on her big chest. Then she kisses him and completes his registration. This completes the transfer of ownership of the alchemy ward to Tuya. Tuya goes to check out the facility. Flora tells him the alchemy ward mixes magic with physical matter to create chimeras and other creatures. She shows him a few other equipment and liquids in the alchemy ward. When he's seen enough, Tuya brings his ladies to the facility. Lindsay and Elza are very surprised at Flora's big chest and are reminded of how small they are in that aspect. Flora makes sure to let the girls know she kissed and fondled Tuya before they arrived. The ladies get very jealous and scold Tuya. After claiming the alchemy ward, Tuya gets back to his kingdom and continues learning a new spell. The spell, named Fly, enables the caster to float and move in the sky like a bird. Tuya gets the hang of it on the first try and also adds some twists to it. After his training, Tuya decides to use a levitation spell on Lindsay. This works as well as Tuya takes Linza up to the highest floor in his castle. He then uses his Fly spell to take himself around his small kingdom. At about that time, the Takadons he took in saw him flying above and cheered him on. Tuya waves back at them and keeps on flying. Just then, he gets a call from the Maker and answers it. On the other end is the Queen of Love. She called to congratulate him on his new status and level. After the call, Tuya gets to Ye's parents to inform them of his engagement to Ye. Surprisingly, Ye's father grants them his hand in marriage without any restrictions. Up next, Tuya gets to Lindsay and Elsa's uncle. They too support his marriage with their nieces. After the meeting, Tuya gets to talk with one of the youngsters in the house. The youngster asks him if he could defeat a thunder bear. Tuya asks what it's all about and Linz's aunt tells him about some thunder bears terrifying the villagers all around. Tuya heads to the forest and defeats all the thunder bears he could find. Following the fight, he gets to the library and finds Enda again. He sits him down and asks him for some information about the Frazes. Enda tells him they're otherworldly creatures sent to their world to find the king's core. The king's core emits an infrasonic sound that draws them closer to it. However, that sound is drowned out by a human heartbeat. So, the phrases have to kill them to reduce the noise. Ende tells Toya he's also searching for some phrase so he can destroy their source before the advanced ones come. Ende leaves shortly afterward. Toya visits the workshop and asks Rosetta if she could mass produce frame gears. Rosetta tells him she currently can't as creating one would require her to get too many materials. So all they can do now is to gather all the materials they can find. Toya gets back to his mansion to talk with his beasts about finding materials. They suggest he forms a pact with the Flame Emperor and she'll help him get all the materials he needs. Tuya heads to his yard and summons the Flame Emperor with the help of his other beasts. After summoning the Flame Beast, Tuya asks to form a pact with her. She agrees immediately, and Tuya names her Kogyoku. Then she transforms into a little bird and stands on his shoulder. She sends a message to all the birds in the area to go searching for other Babylon ruins and report to them once they find one. Tuya wakes up on a beautiful morning and finds Yumina sleeping near him. He greets her and suddenly remembers Yumina wasn't near him the previous night. He asks Yumina what she was doing there on his bed. Yumina tells him she wanted to spend some time near her fiancé since he's been too busy building a nation. Tuya falls off the bed as he keeps wondering how tired he must be not to notice her come to the bed. Yumina pecks his cheeks and leaves the room to change. Later that morning, Tuya settles in his yard to get away from the girls. The flame beast flies by and informs him about the reports from one of the scouting birds. Apparently, they'd found a place resembling the ruin of Babylon. Tuya rallies his girls together and discusses their trip to the next Babylon. The girls all wonder about the kind of things they'll be encountering on their way to Babylon. Soon, they all hit the road. On their way there, they run into a rhinoceros monster. The girls charge toward the monster and take it out in no time. 
Tuya is left to watch them as the girls take on all the monsters on their own. A few miles later, they get to the Babylon ruin. Tuya finds the magic circle and teleports himself into the floating island. He finds the administrator of the island, Monica, and introduces himself. Monica tries to kill him first, but Tuya dodges her attacks. Monica challenges Tuya to fight her and prove his strength. However, Tuya uses the slip spell to make her trip and falls several times until she gives up. Monica appoints Tuya as the new head of the Babylon hangar. On hearing that he stumbled upon the hangar, Tuya is psyched and asks Monica to take him to check around. Monica takes him to see the world's first frame gear. Tuya gets very happy on seeing the gear and gets ready to ride it. However, Monica bursts his bubble and tells him the stuff doesn't work. As Tuya wallows in despair, Monica tells him Flora from the Alchemy Ward could help them out. Tuya gets back to the mansion and finds out they'd be needing a huge amount of spellstones to make the frame gears work. Tuya uses his phone to locate spellstones all around them and mines them. Soon, they activate the frame gears and get ready to pilot it. However, before getting inside a real one, Rosetta builds a frame gear simulator for her master to ride in and practice first before riding the real one. Tuya thanks her for the thought and gets into the simulator. He quickly learns how to use the frame gear in a few minutes and even fights another one on the way. Tuya gets back to the mansion and makes copies of the simulator for his wives to enjoy. While he happily thinks of the cool things he'd be able to do with the frame gears, Sushi runs into him and begs him to marry her. Tuya is surprised at this sudden decision and asks for the real reason why she wants to marry him. Turns out Sushi was about to get into an arranged marriage with Prince Zaboon, the horrible tyrant and womanizer of Linhea Kingdom. Tuya gets to hear how terrible Zaboon is as a person. He definitely can't allow such a man near Sushi. He promises to do something about it. He consults with the other wives over marrying Sushi and they all agree to it immediately. Tuya asks for some advice on how to handle the situation in Linhea's kingdom. Some of the girls suggest he takes the prince's life. However, he pays Alfred a visit to talk about things. Alfred tells him Zaboon is the prime minister's son, so that's how he gets away with his crimes. He also tells Tuya that the king of Linhea is just a figurehead who listens to everything his prime minister tells him. There's a way out, though, as Alfred tells Tuya of a second prince, who was birthed by a concubine to the king. Tuya asks to see the prince immediately. When he arrives, Alfred tells the prince that Zaboon won't be marrying Sushi again, as she's already been betrothed to Tuya. The first prince, Cloud, pays his respects to Tuya and settles down to tell Alfred and Tuya everything. Cloud reveals to Tuya and Alfred that he is the second prince to the king of Linhea. He also tells them that his mother, who is rumored to be kept hidden due to an illness she had, is actually being held prisoner by Prime Minister Wardak. Their plan is to marry their dimwit son, Zaboon, to a princess and have him take over the throne as the new ruler of Linhea. After hearing all the evil plans of the Prime Minister, Alfred decides to do something about it. He calls the other leaders for a meeting to decide whether or not they'll be offering their support to Cloud. After much deliberation, the rulers of Refris, Mismade, and Belfast all agree to help Cloud take over his kingdom. Tuya sets his plan in motion. First of all, he teleports himself, Cloud, Ye, and Linze to Linhea instantly. Only this time, he conceals himself, and the ladies are invisible. They all follow Cloud to the palace to meet his deadbeat brother, Zaboon. Zaboon asks him for Sushi. However, Cloud tells him he couldn't get her because she's already betrothed to someone else. Zaboon gets irritated and slaps Cloud. He then talks down to him and asks for Sushi's suitor. Cloud tells him it's Tuya. Zaboon tells Cloud to spread awful rumors about Tuya and Brunhild so as to discredit him and make Sushi reconsider marrying Tuya. At this point, Tuya and his ladies who were already reeking in resentment for Zaboon, are about to attack the prince. However, his mother shows up and soothes her son's ego. After they leave, Tuya takes Cloud to a hidden storage room to heal him. Soon, Tuya gates himself to Zaboon's slave and releases her from her enslavement collar. Zaboon notices this immediately and calls for his slave. He rushes to ask Cloud if he's seen her, but Cloud tells him no. Unknown to Zaboon, the slave was just behind Cloud hiding with Tuya and the ladies in the storeroom. Zaboon sees Wardak and asks him if he's seen her. Wardak tells him to kill the slave with the collar if it turns out she's escaped. Zaboon does so immediately and shrinks the collar. Thankfully, Tuya had already removed it so the girl didn't die. They follow Wardak and his son Zaboon and overheard them talking about using Cloud to wage war on the nations near them. Tuya gets all the information he needs and plans to infiltrate the palace later on. By nightfall, Tuya teleports himself, the girls, and Cloud to the tower where his mother is being kept. After a hearty reunion with his mom, 
Tuya takes them back to Belfast with him. Marquis Coop, the real Prime Minister of Lin Hea, is the next person they get to meet. They plan to capture the Prime Minister in silence and strip Zaboon of his right to the throne. Tuya cooks up a plan and gets right to it. The next day, Tuya makes himself invisible again and slips into the Linnea Palace. Wardak doesn't take the news of Cloud's mother's disappearance very lightly. He orders his guards to keep searching through the palace and find them. Tuya manages to get into the same room with Wardak and the King's wife. While invisible, he takes out his phone and records Wardak and the King's wife's plan to not only overthrow the King, but also eliminate his bloodline and make Zaboon King. After getting his evidence, Tuya shows it to his girls, the Marquis, and the King of Linhea himself. The King calls a meeting with his officials to announce his successor to the throne. Wardak and the King's wife are present to hear the good news. However, the King shocks them as he appoints Cloud as the next King of Linhea. Zabune, Wardak, and the king's wife challenge his decision to name Cloud as king of Linhea. The king calls Tuya to the stage to present his evidence. Tuya plays the recording in front of everyone and exposes them. As punishment for their treason, the king sentences them to the death penalty. Then he leaves things in the hands of the new king, Cloud. Wardak and his people are sold off as slaves to a slave master. Tuya returns home to meet his new wife, Sushi. At first, he fails to recognize her as his wife. However, Sushi's cuteness makes him accept her as his new wife. In the first scene, Tuya and his ladies attend Lion and Olga's marriage ceremony. Their parents thank Tuya for bridging the gap between both families and joining them to be one. Tuya accepts their thanks and continues talking with his wives-to-be. Sushi and Yumina ask the Riz King when he plans on hosting their wedding ceremonies. Tuya just keeps quiet and tells them he'd think about it. When they get back to the mansion, Yumina suggests the ladies all get to know each other more. In her words, she plans to cultivate their love and strengthen their intimacy. Tuya objects to that, telling them he already has a lot on his plate already. However, the girls complain of feeling too lonely as Tuya isn't around too often. To make it up to them, Tuya decides to take them all out to enjoy themselves. The girls quickly dress themselves up and all appear beautiful and cute in front of their husband. Tuya compliments their dress and takes them to the Kingdom of Refreeze. There, they shop at a present shop to get some presents. Next up, they get to a restaurant to eat some food. Later on, they find some posters about Riel's next release. As they fantasize about what the book could entail, they get mugged by some hungry crooks. The ladies take care of the crooks, and they continue their journey. By evening time, Tuya admits he enjoys spending time with all his wives, so they pull him to their next destination. On their way, they find Sushi, who they seem to have forgotten about. She throws a tantrum and makes Tuya promise to take her along with him on their next date. The next day, Sushi gets to go out with Tuya. After a whole day of enjoying themselves, the duo sit down on a lawn somewhere around Brunhild. Sushi reminds her husband to be about all the good things he's been able to achieve in such a short time. Tuya feels pretty good about himself as he thinks about his achievements. Soon, he receives a transmission from Flora telling him she's already finished extracting the ether liquid from the stones. In a few moments, Tuya gets to the frame gear with his ladies and gets Ye to ride it for the first time. Tuya is to go in next, but Elza beats him to it. In the next scene, Tuya goes to the Babylon workshop to get his new weapon, a sword made entirely out of phrase material. Tuya likes his new sword and asks Rosetta if they could mass produce them. Rosetta tells him they could, but they would need to replenish on Oracalcum. Tuya gets back to Brunhild and thinks of a way to get more Oracalcum. Yumina and Lucia catch him walking in town and join him. Tuya tells them about his search for Oracalcum, and they tell him to search for Oracalcum golems and defeat them for their material. Tuya takes out his phone and pings the location of the Oracalcum golems. He then uses Fly to levitate himself to the sky and fly towards one of the locations. On getting there, he finds a town already overridden by phrases. The soldiers seem to be having trouble destroying them, so he gets down to help. Tuya uses his new sword to finish off all the phrase materials in the town. When he's done, he heals all the wounded people and gifts Lestia, the first princess, a phrase sword. Lestia recognizes Tuya from the news of his travels and pays her respects. Tuya continues his search for the Oracalcum Golem and finds it in the woods. He takes it down and sends it to the workshop before continuing his journey. On his way, he finds a deer and follows it to a riverbank. There, he finds a girl half dead and tries to heal her. However, she was too weak to get up as she's already lost too much blood. After discovering the bleeding lady, Tuya took her to the alchemy lab in the floating garden. Just one day later, Monica works her magic and heals up the wounded pink-haired girl. She, however, tells Tuya that the lady may have lost her memories due to the injuries she incurred on the job. Tuya asks her if it's an after-effect of the treatment from the medicine she was administered. Monica teases him a little bit before taking him to see the patient. On getting to her room, Tuya asks the girl for her name. However, since she couldn't remember anything from her previous life, she has no name. Tuya names her Sakura and takes her to his mansion after she's discharged. At the mansion, 
Tuya meets with Lindsay and Lou to talk about their new visitor. He tells them that Sakura would be staying in the guest room in the mansion. Currently, at that moment, she's outside for a stroll. The girls complain about her feeling too carefree for someone who just lost her memory. However, Tuya tells them that since she remembers nothing, she literally has nothing to be sad about. The girls excuse themselves, and Tuya joins Sakura outside in the garden. There, he finds her singing out with her delectable voice. Tuya gets really surprised and compliments her song and voice. Tuya gets an idea. He takes Sakura to the music room and plays the piano while she sings her song. All the girls hear the sweet voice and soon appear in the music room to hear Sakura and their man sing. Everyone has a good time as Tuya adds some finesse to his style and makes everyone enjoy it. After the performance, Tuya visits the Adventurer's Guild for a new job. The attendant there asks Tuya to help them defeat a strong monster she called the Katoblepas. Tuya asks for some more information, and the attendant tells him the monsters have the power to petrify their attackers with their eyes. So far, about 13 of the adventurers who went to hunt the beast have been turned to stone. Tuya also finds out they currently reside in the Militia Mountains. Finally, he asks about the reward for taking down such a monster, and the attendant tells him it's a hefty price. Tuya decides to do it for the money and asks his wives to be at home, whether or not they'll be obliged to help him. His wives discuss the specifics of the mission and then agree to help him. Tuya takes his wives to the alchemy ward and grants them new swords to make it easier to defeat the monster. Once they've all had their swords, they get into the forest to hunt the Katoblepas monsters. Tuya uses his smartphone to search for the monster. After walking a few meters, he finds a Katoblapas monster eating grass. When the monster sights them, Tuya and his wives jump into action. They try their magic attacks on the monster, but the monster vomits out poisonous smoke that almost affects Linza. Tuya saves one of his wives and then gets serious. He takes out his sword and slices off the monster's head. When he's done, his body begins to turn to stone. He uses his power to remove the stones from his leg and changes his shoes. A few minutes later, Lou's skirt and lower body gets petrified. This means she may have to change her clothes and underwear. The girls quickly rush in to help their fellow colleague after pushing Tuya away. While they think of what to do about the lady, another Katoblepas monster arrives and petrifies Tuya's legs. He removes the stones from his leg and takes down the second monster. His wives thank him for the help and they get back to the Adventurer's Guild. They also carry the other 13 adventurers and Tuya frees them. After getting their reward, Tuya and the other kings test out a new batch of frame gears. After the tests, the kings of the surrounding kingdoms all chill out with Tuya. On the other hand, Hilda, the princess of Lestia and her grandpa, discuss the unique new sword that Tuya and his people were processing. He contemplates visiting Brunhild to see the Tuya and talk business with him. Hilda, who's been wanting to see Tuya, agrees to follow her grandpa. Tuya spends some of his afternoon leisure time in the workshop garden, supervising the creation of more frame gears, when suddenly, he receives a message that someone who claims to be his older sister was at his mansion and was requesting his presence. Tuya hears the voice from the PA and figures out the person's none other than the goddess of love. He quickly rushes to his mansion and finds himself in a meeting between his wives and the goddess of love. Soon after introducing herself, Tuya's wives give them the room to catch up on old times. The goddess tells Tuya she came down from heaven to feed on the enormous amount of love Tuya was getting from the girls and everyone around him. Tuya gets tired of her yapping and allows her to stay with him. Just then, one of his maids announces the arrival of someone from the Lestia kingdom. Tuya asks them to wait a bit before he attends to them. However, the maid tells him they are currently at the knight's training ground, spectating the training knights. Tuya gets over there and finds Princess Hilda and her grandpa there waiting for him. Her grandpa extends his greetings and hopes to do some sightseeing in Brunhild. Tuya welcomes him to his kingdom and hopes he has a good time. The grandpa, however, seems more interested in the maid's butt, and he even touches it. Hilda apologizes for her grandpa's misdemeanor, and then they continue talking. The grandpa asks about the frame gears, and Tuya takes him to the training field to see him demonstrate the gears in real time. Hilda and her grandpa are both bewildered to see the sheer strength of the robots. Grandpa asks Tuya what he plans on doing with the frame gears. Tuya tells him he's stocking up on soldiers to fight the phrase monsters that may attack the lands in the nearest future. Grandpa asks if he could let Lestia use the robots when the need be. Tuya tells him no problem. Up next, Hilda asks Tuya to allow her to fight the strongest person in his country. Tuya pits her against Yai, his strongest wife, and they get to fight it out in the arena. 
After some minutes of seriousness, Hilda defeats Yae in a friendly spar. After the fight, she finds out he was one of Toya's many wives. She gets very flustered as she herself had plans to confess her feelings to Toya. Yae suspects history is about to repeat itself. She and the goddess of love butts in and helps Hilda confess her feelings to Toya. So out of nowhere, Hilda becomes the seventh wife of Toya. Man, this guy's riz is contagious, ma bro. Anyways, Hilda is more than happy to join the crew of wives Toya was collecting with Toya getting confused as usual. Her grandpa, however, steps in and refuses to release his granddaughter without a fight, so he challenges Hilda to a fight. If she wins, she gets to wed Tuya. Before the fight, the other wives welcome Hilda to the crew and appreciate the connection her kingdom would bring to Brunhild. The goddess of love quickly steps in and asks Hilda to tell her how she fell in love with Tuya. Hilda shyly tells everyone about the first time Tuya saved her from the monsters plaguing her land at the time. She said she was so taken aback by his coolness and strength that she fell in love with him at first sight. The girls all cheer for a lovely story. The goddess, however, just keeps on feeding on the love in the air and enriches her skin. The girls then remind Hilda about her match with her grandpa and tell her to win at all costs so she can join them. A few minutes later, Hilda fights her grandpa. In the first half of the fight, the grandpa takes the win. However, Tuya plays dirty and conjures up a lady dressed in a swimsuit. Hilda's grandpa gets distracted for a little while and gets overpowered by his granddaughter. Hilda wins the fight in one swoop and the grandpa admits defeat. He gives Hilda and Tuya his blessing and makes them promise to protect themselves till the end. After the fight, Hilda bows down in respect to the livelihood she's about to get herself into. They talk about Tuya's parents, wondering who they all are. The goddess steps in and tells them not to pressure the little guy too much. He'll tell them about his family when he feels ready. In the meantime, she would tell them about Tuya's first love as a boy. The girls all blush with joy after hearing the goddess's story. Meanwhile, Tuya gets sick from the flu while he's with Sakura. In a few hours' time, Tuya gets a report of an abandoned ruin of one of his floating gardens found around Lestia, Hilda's kingdom. While Tuya wonders what to do, all seven of his wives all show up putting on the outfit his first love, Sister Shuoko, was wearing. Tuya finds out that the goddess of love ratted him out and gets very annoyed at her. The girls ask for his comment on their dressing and Tuya tells them they all look good in the outfits. As for the goddess, he reserves his punishment for her till later. Shortly afterwards, Tuya visits the abandoned ruins in Lestia on his own this time. When he gets there, he finds out that the ruins housed the Babylon's tower and the rampart. Leora, the guardian, appears and explains things to Tuya and tells him that only someone who's compatible can gain control over the tower. Seeing as Tuya appears to have all the affinities, she grants him command over the tower without hesitation. Then. She leads him to the administrator of the tower, another lady who was busy sleeping by a bush. Tuya asks Leora to wake the lady, Pamela, up. However, she doesn't budge. Leora borrows a hot kebab and uses it to draw Pamela out of her slumber. Pamela wakes up, eats the food, and demands for more food and some shelter before she can truly become Tuya's servant. Tuya tells her that's not a problem, so she proceeds to complete the registration process by planting a kiss on her master's mouth. After the registration is complete, she asks for more food, and Tuya gives it to her. Then she continues her stuff and gives Tuya over to Leora, who also kisses him, to complete the registration. Once the registration is complete, Leora transfers ownership of the rampart to Tuya. Once they're done with the transfer of ownership, Leora and Pamela show Tuya the reactor that converts air and water energy into magic energy. Pamela falls asleep as usual and leaves the touring to Leora. When they're done, Tuya teleports his wives to the rampart for some sightseeing. Leora recounts all of Tuya's wives and finds out Sue is missing. Just then, his beast requests a gate to deliver an urgent message to Tuya. Tuya lets him into the room and finds out that the Queen of Belfast had already been put to bed. Tuya quickly opens a gate to the palace and finds the king fiddling in joy over his bouncing baby boy. He asks Tuya to give that baby a name, and Tuya names it Yamato. The king loves the name and raises the baby up high in the sky. The baby begins to cry, and the king rushes back to return the baby to his mother. That evening, the girls get a day off on vacation. They gather around the bathhouse to cool and talk about the upcoming celebration for the new heir to the kingdom of Belfast. While they discuss, they wonder how their own children would look like eventually. Right outside the bathhouse, Tuya hears from his administrators that his destiny is to have up to nine wives. Tuya gets very flustered as he's already having more trouble keeping seven women happy already. Even his servants begin to contemplate getting married to him. Tuya is stupefied. Later on, the girls dress up and line up in front of Tuya and ask him to tell them what he was discussing with his servants. Tuya tries his best to stop Leora from spilling the beans about him having nine wives, but they all push him away and hear the entire thing from Leora. After finding out their husband may have more wives, they get very surprised. Linza asks her husband to get them back to the mansion so they can discuss his punishment properly. At the mansion, the girls have a little discussion and decide to let him live. However, for trying to keep things from them, 
they sentence him to give them a kiss on the lips as restitution. Talia gets very shocked and tells them to finish preparation for the prince's naming. After that, he'll kiss them all. The girls agree with him so they continue the preparations. Later that night, Tuya and the others enjoy the fireworks and serve the commoners food to enjoy and celebrate the prince's birth. Tuya feels very grateful for everything he has begun kissing the girls. Linze, Sushi, Lu, and the others take it pretty well. However, Hilda faints from the cringeness, and Yae with Elza each punch Tuya to the sky. Once he's done kissing all his bride, they get to see the last one of the fireworks and enjoy their night. They find Leora with an orb that could see the future and ask her to see their master's future. At this point, we have reached the end of our video. If you like it, do not forget to put the like button and subscribe for more new videos.